Welcome everybody to Comedy on Tap. I'm your host Mark Monto. This week we've got another, another fantastic show for you. Um, my guest this week is a very, very funny guy. I met him just uh, not that long ago, but he's already done a couple of my shows. He's already, he, I, you know, he's just amazing. And we're going to talk about him and he's going to tell you how amazing. Ted Moss. Welcome to the show, Ted Moss. Thank you, Mark. It's you good look, to be here. You look dapper. Oh, thank you. I try hard. <laughs> <laughs> you, um, you're a funny guy. Well, thanks. You're like, but you're always so, oh, I'm not, you're always, so, what's the word? You always, you're so self, um, help me with this. You're so self. You put, Diminishing. You, yeah. <laughs> Demeaning. You do that. So, <clears throat> we always say, oh, Ted, oh, he, he must not be that funny because he says he's not that well, funny, but then you're, you're, you're then you you're funny. Well, I think half of being smart is knowing what you're dumb at. And I think I'm kind of dumb at comedy. I'm just kind of learning it, so. But you've been doing it for a while, right? Uh, two and a half years, three years. So that's it? Yeah, that's it. But you seem like you're so experienced. Well, I was gainfully employed before this. Right. I had a real job <laughs> where I actually made money. So you, but, so you get to do this now. You, you have the luxury, unlike a lot of us, to be able to do this. <laughs> yes. Yes, I'm old and retired, so I'm doing this for fun. Yeah. Well, you're the only guy who comes to come to tap that wears a coat. Yeah, well, it's out of habit. That's because I'm old. You're I'm showing the, my age. You're at the age now where when you leave the house, you have to look coffin ready. That's right. That's what it is. Layers of black. The more I black I wear, the little I look. Well, we don't, you know, we've talked about this before, but you don't, you don't look your age. Yeah, well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I like the fact you don't see that well. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's talk a little bit about Ted Moss. Um, doing comedy for a few years now. Yep. Uh, how did you get started? Well, you know, I, uh, I sold my business and then I wrote a book. I wrote a book on parenting. Which we're going to plug. Right. We are going to. I hope we're going to plug well, it. Well, let's yeah. plug it right now. As long as we're talking about it. It's called Look Out on Parenting Here. Yes, a survival guide for the single or busy parent. Right, right. And uh, I was talking to people on parenting and I was finding it was hard to find people to talk to. Good parents didn't uh, need me and bad parents wouldn't show up. Right. And right. I thought, why in the world am I even doing this? And I thought, I just like standing up front and talking. Right. And I thought, ah, stand-up comedy. I can do that. Of course. Then give me a mic. <laughs> the nice thing about stand-up is you don't have to be good. All you got to do is show up over and over <laughs> and somebody's going to give you a mic. <laughs> <laughs> but you eventually got... So what did you do? How did you... How did you, how did you what did you do? To get into comedy? To get into it. Well, you know, when I was uh, I was a salesperson right. and I was on the road and I, I always was writing down funny things that happened to me. So I had these books in my car that I would keep. I'd keep notes on weird things that people would say that just, you know, amused me. And uh, I thought I want to do stand-up. So I uh, looked up at the local comedy clubs in Ann Arbor, had the showcase. And so I looked up their open mic and put my hat... My hand in the hat, or I had my name in the hat, right. and my hand in my name in the hat, and they drew my name out and said, "Okay, you're on next Wednesday." And I thought, well, "Shit, I better come up with something funny to say." Can right. I swear on this? I don't of know. Of course, you can oh, swear. Yeah, I can swear <laughs> shit. All right, sorry about that. He says it, and then yeah, he. Uh, yeah, I'm not supposed to say that. Yeah, so uh, I put my you know right. uh, name in, and they said, "Hey." You're performing next week, and I thought I should write something. <laughs> yeah, you already had all these funny things ready to go, or did you have to start from scratch? Well, no, I had a list of things that I thought were funny, right. and now I look at them, not so funny. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I got enough where I was willing right. to go up and say them, right. Right. and you know, you go down there and they pretend that you know what you're doing. Right. You know, here's Ted Moss, a really <laughs> funny guy, and I'm thinking, I've never done this before. And you walk up on stage, and it's kind of intimidating, right. really. So you had, a you had a, well, you knew your jokes, but you had to memorize the order of your jokes. You know, I, I don't know that I was that organized. I just knew that I knew a bunch of things that I thought were funny. Really? That I was going to talk about. And so I just walked up and talked about things that I thought were funny. And paused when I hoped they would laugh. <laughs> so how did it go? I, you know, it went well enough where I wanted to do it again. Right, right. So I did it about three or four times at different places. And I think next I went to Laugh Tracks in Novi. Mm -hmm. And then... Uh, then I decided I better take a class. I better learn, you know, what the structure is and what I'm supposed to be doing. Right. So I signed up for a class. And the class helped you out uh, with... Well, you know, I, I don't know how much you know about Bill Bouchard's class, but right. it's really kind of a public speaking class and don't be afraid to get up and talk. And uh, I don't have a problem with that. I've done a lot of public speaking. But with me, he actually helped me with the structure of jokes and how to get to the punchlines and how to pause and not to step on people's laughs. And it was good to practice in front of that group and be critiqued a little bit. Right, right. 
<laughs> and how to, and so that and so that helped you. So you did more and more venues, and here you are. Yes, yes. Then I signed up for a couple more classes. I took the oh. advanced class a couple times. Okay. Learned how to host. Then I got to host at Mark Ridley's a couple times. How did that go? Oh, it went really well. You know, hosting's a lot of work. People don't realize that sure. is a lot of work. I mean, you have to remember everybody's name. You got to be funny in between. You can't use too much you gotta time. Keep, you got to keep it going. It's yeah. a job. Right, 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 right. It's not just show up and do your set. It's it's it's, it's a whole thing. Yeah, Joel said uh, that you have to be an advocate for the the audience because they really want to leave. They're glad to be there, but Correct. they want to know when they're going to get to leave. So right. oh, only two more to go. <laughs> you got like, a good time with you guys. Yeah, so that's a, good a good point. host will kind of keep it moving and kind of helps the audience. Right. Think, so. so as you are doing all these, <clears throat> you've gotten into it, you're doing all these things and funny things come to you. Do you have one set or do you have different sets or what? Uh, I have a lot of material. Yeah. I probably have, I don't know an hour and a half, two hours worth of material. So how do you know what you're going to do per venue? How do you know? Well, I don't. <laughs> so really? I, so I, you know, I went down to, uh, I went down to Livonia uh, when Joey's was open about a year and a half ago, and I did a bunch of political humor. And I don't think these people even knew who the candidates were. And I, I thought, this is just wrong, wrong <laughs> stuff for this venue. Right. I went over to Grand Rapids and did a lot of sexual stuff and lost the crowd. No. So you kind of feel no. out the room as you do it? Well, no. When I get done, I go, oh, that was a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't know. I shouldn't I, have done that. I have a plan. Right. But it, the plan doesn't always work. So it's tough, though. I mean, that's you know we joke about it, but that's tough to do on stage in the middle of your set. Go, uh, it's not going. Let me go to that. It's well, I think really good comics can do it. Right, but you're not really. No, good. no, yeah. I'm kind of a level <laughs> two, maybe. No, and let's, no, I don't talk about that though, because I, I like your style. How would you describe your style? Because I think you're very funny, and then a lot of people think Ted Moss is very funny. <laughs> so how would you? I mean, you know, I, and I, and you told me a little bit about your family life. So how would you describe your your comedy and how you're, you know? Well, I think I think it's important to uh, establish some kind of character. Like you're gonna you're gonna speak from some sort of perspective. Uh, I mean, I'm not the angry old guy. I'm right. not mad at people, so I, I'm not the guy that's gonna, you know, bitch about stuff on stage. I'm also not the sarcastic kind of nasty person. Uh, I don't know that I'm that clever. So I, I tried originally to speak from my background, and I grew up in Flint, right. and so I kind of have this, you know, neighborhood urban background. But I don't seem like that. I don't present myself that way, and so I had to abandon that and say, you know, what do they think I am? And since I'm older, I speak from a, I'm old and frustrated and confused point of view. Do you talk about old old guy stuff? Well, I talk about not understanding what's going on, like being confused, because I think that people can relate to that. Right, right. You know? And I think a lot of good comedy is talking past people. Uh, you see that in a lot of, uh, when you have two people doing comedy together, they'll be speaking past people, whether it's, you know, Archie and Meathead or whoever it is, yeah. Gracie and Alan, they're all speaking past each other. And I think... In my case, since I'm old, um, sometimes I can say the environment, what's going around, is speaking past me. I really don't understand what's going on because, you know, I'm a baby boomer. I'm not a millennial or Gen right. X or whatever. Right. So. right. so you can speak to what, what you know. Yes. I speak to what confuses me. Like, I really don't get why this is going on. Right, right. And, and you identify talk, with it. You talk about your, your family as well, don't you? Uh, your kids? Do you, not, you know, I touch on it, but I don't talk about the kids much because okay. I, I don't think it's that funny. Right. Kids were a lot of work. <laughs> they weren't funny. It was just a lot of work for a lot of years. Right, right, right. Well, you you know you were you know, working during that time, and you know, but you're a good dad. You've got you've got a lot of stories. About I was a single parent. I was a single parent uh, from the time my kids were two and four until right. they were off in college. Uh, I actually had joint physical custody. Had them fifty percent of the time, which is really strange for back in those days. Guys didn't normally do that. So now, do you uh, growing up? Did you now? We talked about our, the parallels we have as far as playing growing right, up right. and everything. In did you listen to uh, old time comedy? Who did you listen to when I was young? Yeah, who influenced you? <sighs> you know, I. That's like saying, what music do you like? I yeah. mean, I, and I like Motown, and I like rock, and I like, I even like some rap. And within comedy, uh, it depends on the time. I mean, originally, you know, Cheech and Chong and Bill Cosby, you know, who were storytellers. I enjoyed that. Right. But, you know, more recently, uh, there's a lot of good people out there like Bill Burr and um, Chappelle is, is great. But it depends on what you're in the mood for. Sometimes right. you're in the mood for Jerry Seinfeld. Right. So... But I think there's a time for comedy. I think comedy kind of goes old. 
after a while. I think if uh, Eddie Murphy showed up and did his old Eddie Murphy act, probably he wouldn't go over. Wouldn't fly as well. I don't think. Well, I don't think so. Good I don't point. think it's that it's viable point. right now. So I think you have these people and you like their style. I just watched an interview last night with uh, Steve Martin, and he did some really neat things. But then he retired because he was done. He, and he said, well, I have nothing else to say. Right. And really, that wouldn't play right now, right. I think, because right. it's a different audience. So that's that's kind of like who you who you like now. So you're, you're who so who would you say that you like now, like these days? Is it a Bill Burr or? Yeah, I, I like Bill Burr. Um, I actually like the guy that did Cash Cab. Yeah, Ben uh, uh, Ben uh, Bailey. Ben Bailey. Ben Bailey. Ben yeah. Bailey. Yeah. Cash yeah. Cab. Yeah, yeah. He, he's very good stand up. Yes, he yeah he is. He's he's fantastic, and he does all clean, and I admire that. I wish I could do all clean. Now, do you? Well, for the people who haven't seen you, you, <laughs> how, how would you describe that type of your set, your your comedy? Uh, I mean, I wouldn't describe you as really a dirty comedian. I tell a lot of sex jokes. I, you know, I, I'm not vulgar. <laughs> I don't, I don't tell vulgar jokes. Right. But you know, I talk about camel toe and I talk about right. things that. I wouldn't do my set in front of my children. Right. Say that. That's a good way. You know, I yeah. do my set in front of your children, <laughs> but not mine. <laughs> so, so, Dad, can we come out and see you? Well, your kids are older now. Yes. Well, I have kids from 40 to 20. Wow. Wow. Spanned them out. So, yeah. have, have they ever seen you? Come no. 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 Never. No. No. Never. I actually uh, read, or I guess I texted my daughter, my oldest daughter, some of my jokes. And she just came back and said, oh, my God, Dad, are you really going to say this? And I thought, yeah, I better not share anymore. <laughs> I, think, I think we're done with that. You know? What do you do when you, when you think of jokes? How do you do you think of them or write them down? Or what, what makes you think of jokes? I wake up in the morning thinking of jokes. <laughs> I really do. Uh, the, I, most of my jokes are written before I get out of bed. I wake up in the morning and I think of funny things. Really? Uh, yeah. From sleep? Uh, you know, I think there's that period between awake and sleep when you're sleepy and when your mind's at rest and you aren't thinking of other things, there's room for artistic stuff to come in. Wow. And so right before I go to bed, I play piano too, is when I uh, compose my best songs and right when I wake up is when I write my best jokes. <laughs> <laughs> True. I, I write you? them naked. <laughs> naked in bed. For some jokes. reason, I, I, uh, I thought of, this morning, I thought of a uh, joke about a fifth of Beethoven. I don't know why. <laughs> I have no idea why. Let me write it down. Oh, I know why, because I played it last night. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> well, that's interesting. I've never heard that. So what? You, so then you think of these things, and in the, in the, now you've got a naked dead moss picture. Uh, <laughs> Laying so, in bed, doing comedy, <laughs> looking at the ceiling, all alone. The lonely old man. <laughs> so do you, naked comedy. you write them down for the side of your bed? Or? No, no, it takes me... Uh, you know, when I wake up in the morning, I will lay in bed for half an hour. Right. I've been that way since I was a little kid. I just, I, it takes me a long time sure, to wake up. Sure. And so I'll start thinking of jokes and tags and other jokes that go with it, or extensions of jokes that I did the night before right. will come to me first thing in the morning. And then I write them all down. That's I put them all on my computer. I have them on an Excel document. And I have the, the setup, the punchline, and the tags, and then I rate them. And then I can move them around if I want to. That's interesting. Yeah. You're a real scientist of comedy. You're, you really are. Uh, that's great. I mean, you, you've got well, the... Yeah, funny things only come to me every once in a while. I got to write them down. <laughs> See what I mean? You're self, self-deprecating self in it, you know. Yeah. But you're very funny on stage, though. Well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, uh, you, you, it, it seems natural. Anyway. Well, thanks. You know, I think that's. I think confidence is important. Mm -hmm. You see, really good comics. They always look very confident in what they're doing. Mm -hmm. They don't look like they're forcing the conversation. They look like they're just speaking. I'm not sure I'm there yet, but I'm working at it. So when you when you're on at a club and you're going to do, you're about to go on, or you're or even beforehand, that like at that night when you show up to the club, do you, what do you do? What do you do to prepare? Do you have anything that gets you in the comedy mode, or you just kind of do you drink? Do you think of yourself? Yeah, you know, well, you know, I'm not much of a drinker. I did have a couple of drinks one night before I went on. Decided that was a bad idea afterwards. Right. So uh, I'm usually not nervous. I'm backstage, and a lot of people are nervous. Um, I think I probably am nervous, but my brain doesn't know it. Once in a while, I'll notice my palms will be a little bit wet, right? And I'll think, I wonder why they're wet. So maybe my body's <laughs> nervous, but my brain doesn't recognize that. Right. Because I've done so much public speaking, I'm just used to walking out. I mean, so you don't really uh, think of it. You don't really. You know, you're set, but <clears throat> prior to going up, you haven't. You don't go over it. Maybe at home or oh, all the way. Oh, uh, well, 
preparing the day before, yeah, I will say my set at least fifty to hundred times, okay, out loud into a microphone in my living room. Right. And my dogs are like, really? Yeah. Oh, goes, like yeah, one more time into the bridge. Here we go. Uh, so I, I rehearse a lot into a microphone at home over and over. But right before I go on, uh, the most important thing is just remember my first couple lines. Right. But I also try to be in the moment with the audience. So if there's something going on that the previous comic said or something I can tag on the front of it, I'll do that. Okay. But after that, it's like remembering the first two jokes. Right. If I remember the first two jokes, Does everything else Bouchard is Does Bouchard Because that's interesting that you say that. Does he teach that you should do that? Because that's a great uh, comedy uh, is, is doing the, the you know what the comedi last comedian said or yeah. did or, or observational stuff. Just that that's obviously just uh, improvisational just right because it's nothing that you can write because it just happened is right, that right 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 uh, that's a great thing to well do. That, you do a lot of that and I think I every do. good yes you do every good host does that they come up in between and they'll make reference to something the last guy ended on right. or some position he took okay. whether it went over or not and oftentimes even if it didn't go over right. if you do it right, right then you'll get a laugh out right. of it right. and kind of relax everybody about the set and right. then set them up for the next so I think you do a good job well thank you that's, that's, that's nice here I, I didn't think I did that but now I yeah. think I did. Well, they told me I was supposed to. <laughs> so, that was it right there. That's all I got for you. <laughs> how, how was your set, though? Is there bullet points for you? Or uh, you said, because you've, you've done a lot of public speaking, so uh, obviously you don't have, you know, you're not doing word for word memorization. So I pretty I pretty much am. But I'm dyslexic. I'm dyslexic. Right. So I have a hard time reading. Right. So I. You're, you're seriously dyslexic. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm semi seriously dyslexic. <laughs> I don't know how you'd be. I'm seriously dyslexic. Right, right. I'm, I'm not really, it's not really bad, but I am dyslexic. Right. So I don't have the ability to go up and read sentences. But I do write out all my jokes word for word and even change little words around to get to try and shorten them up and get to the punchline fast or make sure I don't drag the punchline out, make right. sure that's sharp and crisp where I can. And, you know, I have some jokes that are really good and clean that way and other ones that not so much. Right, you know, right. But like everybody else, I'm working on making it better. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I, I tell everybody I'm, uh, I'm half Italian, half dyslexic. <laughs> I, yeah. know, I know. Yeah, you know I, that, right? Yeah, right. Yeah, that's a good joke. Yeah, yeah, the other day someone made me an offer I, I couldn't understand because I would, it was backwards. <laughs> I don't know how that was. Um, but anyway, um, so, but that's good. So, um, now during these three years, you've, you've got, do you have any stories or anything, Ted, you want to, you, you, that can just point out? I mean, do you have a belligerent uh, uh, audience member or did you? I'm, you know what? I've never had a heckler. I, I've had a, I've had people follow me and make fun of me in their act. But I think if it goes over, if you get a joke out of it, I'm all for it. If you don't, then you just look like a jerk. So right. I don't care. You know, <laughs> you make me a target. No, you know what? I don't. Nothing. You never fell down on stage. You never uh, burst. You never had your zipper down. Nothing. Well, like no, that. actually, actually. There you go. Well, <laughs> I knew I'd spawn something. <laughs> yes. Actually, uh, you know, I did a lot of public speaking when I was in sales and marketing. And I used to teach commercial lighting design. And I was speaking in front of a whole bunch of people that were learning lighting design. Right. And it was early in the morning. And I'm not good early in the morning. Right. And uh, as I started to speak, one of the people pointed out, and I had a full suit on. And they pointed out that my zip was down, and so I had to turn around and deal with that. So I had a little joke of it. But that was kind of embarrassing, yeah. especially in a professional setting. Comedy, not as embarrassing. Maybe, you know, people it's part of the set. Hey. Yeah, this is what I meant to do. Yeah. Yeah, Ted, he's funny. We can see his penis. Yeah. 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 People in the lighting business didn't think I was so funny. Oh, it's a drier subject. How do you. So, um,. What, what when you do com you said you're hooked on comedy now ever since you started getting into it, um, or or did you uh, do you think that I, I mean what what about comedy? I the guess only reason I do comedy is I need something to put on my profile for my dating. <laughs> <laughs> I can't say I'm just sitting at home watching TV. Right, right. I need something on my profile. And, it's and, be and everybody real. says they want a guy with a sense of humor. I like I do stand up. I do stand up. I, wouldn't you like me? I keep you laughing all the time. You know. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you like the laughs. And you know, 
I'll tell you what, I give props to anybody that tries to stand up. It's it tough. is not easy. People It the, is not easy. You don't realize. I mean, I remember the you know, the first time I walked out on that stage in Ann Arbor. With all and, that experience behind you. Yeah, but still comedy is different than doing a presentation mm -hmm. because the lights are bright, you only can see two or three rows in front of you in a comedy club. Right. And you got a hundred people saying, Okay, funny boy, what do you got? <laughs> There's nothing but you and a mic and you're like God, I hope I say something funny right. really fast. Right. So it's pretty intimidating. And then to seem calm enough to just have a conversation like this is uh, something natural when right. it really is not natural. Right. You know, that takes a lot of guts. So anybody, even if you're lousy, even right. if you don't tell good jokes, don't have jokes, if you get up and try stand up, props to you. I right. think I think it's a really, really difficult thing. It's very hard. In fact, I'll, I'll, a little personal, you know, I, <clears throat> I started when I was really young. I was like a, a teenager when I actually started stand-up comedy. But I had had all this theater experience behind me. Right. And I'd been huge into theater. Like it, high school? Like high school. I was like, you know, so I, I thought, well, this this will be easy. I said, I know how to memorize stuff. Right. I can, I, I'm used to speaking out in front of people. This is going to be the same thing. Right, right. And um, it, it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> it was very different than acting. Very different yeah. than acting yeah. because stand up is just you, you're, it's just you and them, and uh, and you have to write your own comedy. You got to write your own comedy. Well, you can't do that. I think people don't understand that. They also don't understand that there's a time limit on it. Right, and that's kind of stressful. You know, if if you lose your place or if somebody says something or you have to stop and you know that clock is ticking, right. the light's going to turn on and you got to get off stage. Right. Like in Ann Arbor, you have to be off within, I'm going to say, 10 to 15 seconds of the time they flash the light, mm -hmm. after the warning light, mm -hmm. when they flash the light. And that's a lot of pressure. And right. if somebody interrupts you, you're like, okay, I have to skip over this, but if I skip over this, I can't do the call back to that. So it's kind of nerve wracking inside. Meanwhile, you're trying to act like everything's wonderful and you're just calm about what's going on. You gotta keep on. it going, you gotta keep yeah, it yeah, going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's tough to do. Yeah. Well, how do you write? I mean... Uh, I just do what most people do. You know, I, I just write down funny stuff that happens and I just work on those bits. Right. You know? Um, I had my TV show today, and I had Ted Moss on, and he farted, <laughs> yeah. and I got a I got a whole set. So thank you for farting. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for having us. But it's it's just everyday stuff for me, you know. And I, you know, you know my my kind of comedy. I go back to you know uh, my you know family, and I talk about you know my you know my family and stuff like that. So it's a little easier to talk about what has happened versus right. Well, versus. you're kind of a character. Yeah. Yeah, like I said, I, you remind me of Soupy Sales. You kind of got that Soupy Sales. <laughs> that was thing a very, on. you told me that uh, yeah, my yeah, last comedy you do. show. You have, you have the, the face for comedy. That's, that's, <laughs> is that good? I've been told that. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. A lot of times it wasn't as complimentary as that, but, <laughs> but no, I, I took that very well because I've always, uh, they've always uh, yeah. said that. So thank you. That's yeah. very nice of you. Yeah. Now, what do they say about you? Do you, 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 you know, your name is uh, Ted Moss, but you, you, do you get the Ted Danson thing? What, what do you get? No, who I look like? <laughs> yeah, uh, I had one girl walk walk up to me one time and said, "Big, you look like Big." There's, oh, oh, yeah, yeah. And there was a guy on uh, yeah. some yeah, yeah, yeah. show, Sex in the City. That was I don't even know who it was. Yeah, was like, you're, you're big, you're big. And oh, I, there you go. I said, "Thank you." I, how'd you know? <laughs> I, I had no idea what big was. I, apparently, big was not a thing. It was a person. <laughs> but you, but you took it. Adjective. It's a, yeah. As far as I'm concerned, I am. Yes, I am. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> so, um, that's funny. So, but do you ever now? Do you get the gr groupies or anything like that, Dad? Uh, no. <laughs> no, I mean, have you ever I, had I've had to give out a couple autographs. I, they were what do you Kodak, think of that? I they were people... Kodak moments. I'm like proud of it. Like, geez. <laughs> yes, I'd be glad to do that. What yeah. do you think of people who think that we are worthy of you? Do you like, sure, no, I mean... Well, there's people that aren't that smart. <laughs> <laughs> I always think it's funny to give out a I, no, I really like It's a big compliment. It I is. think it's a compliment that somebody wants your autograph, right. and, and I... I have no idea why they would want my <laughs> autograph. I mean, occasionally I'll sign a book, but I wrote the book and that took months. You did. You did. Stand up, stand up and talk about... You, do you want to talk a little bit about this? Look out, I'm parenting here. Tell me about... You said you... Um, you did, and you got also... What is, this is like a, a, a WW... What would, <laughs> what, what, what would Ted do? WWTD. <laughs> yeah, uh, what would Ted do? Let right. Love Be Your Guy. Let Tell me a little bit guy. about this because this is interesting. What well, you doing? I was a single parent and I was looking for... Uh, I was looking for a book when I was raising my kids because when I volunteered to be a single parent, right. uh, my kids were two and four and they were standing there in my living room looking at me and I thought, 
You're probably hungry or you probably need something, don't you? And I thought, I don't really know what to do, but I didn't have any parents to guide me or help me. And so uh, I just tried different things until uh, I found what worked. And I actually went down to look for a book, just kind of a quick reference book on, you know, how to get them to stay in bed at night or how to, how to potty train them or whatever. And there were only books on, if you have a troubled child, this, and I thought, I don't really? have a troubled child. I have just a regular child and I just want him to, you know, get up in the morning, go to bed at night, stay in bed at night, eat their food. Right. And there isn't a quick reference book on that. And I thought, you know, if I ever get a chance, I'm going to write that. And my sister and... Uh, friends started calling me up after a while saying your kids are really well behaved. How do you do this? And so I'm giving advice and I think this is really strange. You don't say read the book? No, 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 no. This is, this is <laughs> when I was a single parent. Oh, okay. Long before the book, people were asking me for advice on how to raise their kids. And I thought, I'll write that book someday. And I had a chance once I sold my business. So right. I wrote the book. That's awesome. That is yeah. great. Well, kudos to you for, for even writing a book. I mean, that's, that's not easy to do. No, it isn't. It, well, and actually, uh, I almost give it away. It's 99 cents. E copy is 99 cents on Amazon. Uh, I'm not trying to make any money on it, but if you're a single parent. 99 cents? Is that all? E they, for an e book. Yeah. For, Oh, an ebook. Uh, e ebook, yeah. Okay. It, it costs more than that to print a hard. How much for a hard copy? I think they're seventeen dollars okay. for hard copy. Okay. But okay. E get an ebook, okay. ninety nine cents. Download it, and if there's just one tip in it that helps you with, with your that's your awesome. Kid, that's you know, great. Well, for single parents, right? You know, I carry it in my uh, car, and if I run into a waitress or a single parent, right. or Somebody that's having trouble with their kids, I'll give them a copy. Well, that's great. And when I give them a copy, they ask for my autograph, and I go, "Oh, that's, <laughs> that's, that's of course, great. no problem." Yeah, yeah. Wow, time has flown by, Ted. This is great. So uh, look on. Parenting here, Ted Moss the third. You're the third. I am. There's been two of you before you. And the first one uh, was the uh, director of public works in Flint when they built the water plant. My name is actually inside the Flint water plant. Wow, that's I your know. grandfather. Yes. Wow. I I probably should be leaving town now. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. This is here's the true I was, culprit. I was not responsible. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Ted, thanks so much. How can they get a hold of you before we were like, time has flown by. How can um, they get a hold of you? How, Ted Moss, the funny comedian. Oh, they can follow me on Twitter at uh, Ted Moss Comedy. You have a live Twitter thing? I have a Twitter. You're a, I tweet. You're a t <laughs> I did my, my daughter just taught me how to tweet the other day. Oh, really? I put out my first tweet. Oh, oh, I've done that for years. Oh, really? Yeah, but I, I don't I don't usually get on Twitter a lot. Cause no? I don't. I think if Donald Trump can twi right. tweet, tweet, I can tweet. Right, right. What was your first tweet? What was it? Uh, she said, I said, I, I said, I'm up and running. I have no followers. She said, Dad, you have to tweet something. I said, I don't know what to tweet. And she said, just give out some advice or some holidays. So what was it? What was it? So I, I did uh, 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 remember on Thanksgiving, you are what you eat. Hashtag don't be a pussy. Uh, <laughs> that's right. That's funny. And that's where you got, that's where you, I got that tweet. Oh, did you? Yeah. Uh, all right. I thought all that right. was that just was for me. That was my very first one. Yeah, I had zero followers. I thought I thought that was just for me. No. no, no. <laughs> Ted Moss, thank you so much for coming thank by. You, you yeah, got to stop by again. You. This is great. All right. Thanks. Wow. Thanks we've never had me. a real author on here. Um, Ted Moss, check him out on his Twitter or Facebook. Ted Moss the third, very funny guy. Also, catch him in the comedy clubs all over. He is. Uh, I can attest to it. You uh, you killed when you played my room last. So very very funny guy. Ted Moss. The third. Uh, that's all the time we have for the, this week, folks. Uh, my name is Mark Bonta for Comedy on Tap, and everyone have a funny night. Good night, everyone. Ted, thanks again.